Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Abide in me is the title of this devotion. Abide talks about being steadfast, stable. He who abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall dwell, or he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is Psalm 91 verse 1. And that they think most likely is a psalm of Moses, as, as Psalm 90 is. Psalm 90 they know is a psalm of Moses. Psalm 91 they think was also one that came from Moses and talks about the Ark of the Covenant, where the mercy seat is being overshadowed by the seraphims, where the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat and the glory of the Lord began to manifest on the priests that were ministering on the people's behalf and carried them before the Lord and blessed them in His, in His name. And you see that secret place of the Most High, secret place of the Most High talks about the intimacy, intimacy. That's what, it, what that means really, the intimacy with the Father is where he begins to hold you steady and stable in his sufficiency. And friends, this is where we all need to grow. We're not always as stable, steady, steadfast, persevering, enduring in that intimacy with him. So then we're not always experiencing his sufficiency. My grace is sufficient, said Jesus to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10. And my grace shows up best in the frailty of your weak human nature, so that it's obvious to everybody what you are and what you say and do is not of yourself, but comes by my grace, my power in you. And that's what you're called to, to be a witness of my grace and power. And God wants us to live that way in our relationship towards our spouse, our family, our children, our grandchildren, everybody, that they recognize there's something about us that is not of this world, but comes from our Father in heaven. And so this is what I want to talk to you about. He will abide in me, abide in me. Jesus said, abide in me. Come on, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Hold fast to me. Deuteronomy 4.4 4 says, You are here and alive today because you held fast to the Lord. You didn't let go of Him. Don't let go of the Lord. Don't let go of Him. You say, but Pastor, I feel so weak and so powerful. It hurts. Hold on. Hold on to Him as He will never fail to hold on to you. So let me read to you here verse 6 and 7 of John 15. Verse 6 and 7 of John 15. Here it is. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather him and throw him into the fire, and they are burnt. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. The real focus on this teaching today is the abide in me. Abide in me. And you know, we're, we're sometimes like undisciplined little ones that still need more training how to stay in position, how to stay in place. And we know where our place is. The Heavenly Father has placed me in Christ who has become unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption so that I may be able to boast before God in whom He has made Christ unto me that I may praise the Father, in other words, for this wisdom to perceive and recognize the wonders of His person and this right standing that I now have and can live in a way that pleases Him and this sanctification that I am set holy unto Him and this redemption that I'm free from anything that would corrupt me from Him. You see, that is where the Lord wants us to live in, abide in me, abide in me. And, and Jesus, he says to his disciples, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of him, so he who feeds or abides in me shall live because of me. That's John 6, 57. Feed means that you draw your nourishment from your union with the Lord Jesus 
or as he would say in Colossians example, and I really like that verse. It's really helped me in my spiritual growth. What I'm going to read to you now is Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. As you therefore have, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Order your life after your union with Him. Let it be obvious to everybody that you're living in union with Him. Uh, my dear, dear friend John uh, Triffitt, who is one of the senior pastors here in the church with his wife Paula, they have a son called Alex John. And, and, and John told me how Alex John, his name is Alex and his second name is John, how Alex is called the Jesus manager at school. It's not because he's constantly standing there saying Jesus, Jesus, but he has ordered his life after his union with Jesus. And it's obvious to everybody that he is there living in union with Jesus. So as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Come on. You're established in the faith. You know Jesus. No, there is absolutely no indifference in you. You're not a compromiser, a double-minded who cannot expect to receive it. No, your mind is made up. I know my Redeemer lives. Come on now, that is what Job said in chapter 19 of Job. He says, I know my Redeemer lives. And he says, even if all the flesh comes off of my bones, I will see him for myself while I'm still in this body. I will see him. And, and that was one of the great struggles with Satan. Satan was seeking to blind him from being able to perceive, recognize, and see the, the, the knowledge of the Lord. He says in chapter 23, I think it is, I go forward, but he's not there. Back, he's not there. Left, he's not there. Right, he's not there. He's around me, but I cannot connect with him. And that was the demonic activity that was coming against him to seek to separate him from God. And no matter how hard, Satan tried to separate Job from God. He couldn't do it because Job would not let go of God. He refused to let go of him. He said, no, I am one with him and he's one with me. And after he's completed searching my heart, he himself brings me forth pure as gold. I know I will see him. And you know, and then in the last chapter 42, he says there, I think it's verse six. He says, I had heard of you with the hearing of my ears, but now my eye sees you. Oh my goodness, what a good thing it is when you insist to abide in Christ. And maybe you say, Pastor, I can't feel it, but I know he's in me and I know I'm in him. I know I'm one with him. I can't feel it. I can't see it. And maybe like Job, the circumstances haven't changed. The circumstances haven't changed. And yet you believe my Redeemer lives, and yet you believe by His stripes I'm healed, and yet you believe He is for me and not against me, and if God be for me, then who could be against me? And yet you believe the Lord is the strength of my life, the Lord is my light and my salvation, and yet you believe, and yet you believe. That's the abiding. That's the abiding. You rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it, abounding in that faith with thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Lord. By your stripes I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. These symptoms are giving way to your healing anointing that's flowing through my body. I know your healing is in my body and I'm being made whole and healthy. I thank you, Lord. I'm healthy by your stripes. I thank you. I'm whole by your stripes. You know, you know, I I can have a disc in my lower back and it comes out. And when it comes out, my torso stands next to my hips and it, it really looks painful. I mean, you look in the mirror and you see my hips and then you see my body like this next to it. It's quite unusual. And Virginia, see, if she happens to see it, it's usually in the morning early. And, and she would look at me and she says, oh, darling, that looks so painful. And I said, not to worry not to worry. And I have this absolute faith and it's given by my Savior and He 
perfects it in me constantly, the disc goes back. The disc goes back. So I have this faith, the disc goes back and it goes back. And I live my life without pain. I live my life without issues. And that is the healing that's in my flesh. If it wasn't for my abiding in Him, I would maybe need back surgery. I am not saying that somebody who has back surgery is not abiding in the Lord. Don't, don't turn what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. No, no, I know some beautiful saints of God who, who've had back surgery. So no, I don't say that at all. What I'm just saying is, believe it, the healing is in you. That's really what I'm saying. It's not about me here. This is just a little testimony. The healing is in you because you're abiding in the healer and the healer is in you. The salvation is in you because you're abiding in the Savior and He's in you. Oh, the wonderful righteous one, the holy righteous God is in you and you are righteous and believe it in Jesus' name. Believe it. Believe it in the name of Jesus. Abide in me is what the Lord is saying. You know, despite that we can feel so human at times and weary of being so human, yet we know even though I'm dead in the flesh, yet I live by the Spirit and my flesh is nourished by the Spirit. And that's why I feel the life in my flesh because the Spirit of life is in me. The Spirit of Jesus Christ is in me. And that's where the Apostle Paul comes from when he says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ lives in me. That is abiding in Him. Believe it in the name of Jesus. Believe it with all of your heart. Believe it with all of your heart. Believe it. I live because He lives in me. Jesus is my life. Colossians 3 verse 4. He is my life. Colossians 3 verse 4. He is my life. Oh, I believe it. He who has the Son, 1 John 5 verse 9. He who has the Son has life has life. I have life, the life of the Son of God in me. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let me close with this little verse from the Amplified Translation, Galatians 5, 16. But I say, walk, live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. And then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of your human nature without God. Come on, the answer. The answer for you and me is that we keep abiding in Him. We keep abiding. We keep abiding. Oh, when you feel, listen, when you have a moment and you feel the terrible pain of your weak human nature and all of its lowness and, and emptiness and worldliness and you feel it, go on your knees before the Savior. You are my life. You are my life. You are my life. You are my life, Jesus. You are my life, Lord Jesus. I have nothing without you. I can do nothing without you. Apart from you, I wither away in my human nature. Apart from you, I am for the, for the, for the fire. But I know I'm not destined to the fire. I'm destined to the glory because I abide in you and you abide in me, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And you begin to worship and praise the Lord. And before you know it, his life-giving grace begins to manifest in your flesh. And you will be so grateful and thankful that you didn't let go of him. So come on, hold on to your Savior as he will never fail to hold on to you. Amen. Have a good day.